In my last video I built a stair that goes up my kids' bed and one of the questions in the comments was how do I calculate the angles so that I can make the cuts precisely and everything can fit nicely in my wall and into my floor. So in this video I'm going to show you how to do this exactly, so using math. And the situation is very much straightforward, you have the wall, you have the floor, you know the height of the wall, so where you want your stair to land, and you know the maximum extent of your floor. So you can change it if you want more or less inclination, but you know this distance. And you also know the thickness of your material, so you know how big your piece of wood is. And I want to do this using, using only three cuts, so one for the length and then two for the angles. But I want to measure only distances, I don't want to use any crazy device to measure angles. So let me show you how this works. All right. So you have, the situation is like this, you have the floor and you have the wall. And these two meet at some 90 degree angle, so they are orthogonal. You also know the extent of your floor, which is the distance B, and the extent of your wall, which is the distance H, from height. So the first question is, what's the distance between these two points over here? Now, this distance is critical because it's going to determine the length of my piece of material, so how much material I actually need. And I'm going to call this L. Now, I can very easily calculate this by saying that L squared equals H squared plus B squared. So L equals the square root of h squared plus b squared. So that is my first result. And for me, L is 125.3 millimeters. So that is the distance of the piece of wood that I actually need to make this work. Now, the second part is a bit more complicated. So if you take a look at the material of your piece of wood, it's going to be like that. It's going to intersect at the wall. It's going to do the same at the floor. So these pieces I need to cut out, right? Now let's start by calculating the angles alpha and beta. Now this is also quite straightforward because I know that if I take my long L and I project it at the bottom, so multiply by the sine of alpha, this equals B. So if I move this around, I say that the sine of alpha equals B divided by L, or alpha is the arc which sine is B divided by L. So that is my second result that allows me to calculate my angle alpha. And for me, alpha comes up to be 28 degrees. Now I could calculate the same way pro projecting L into the wall using the angle beta, but I also know that uh, the three angles need to sum up to 180. So beta is 180 minus 90 minus 28, which basically gives me that beta is 62 degrees. Again, approximately. Now the question is, how do I cut these pieces of material out? How do I make these cuts? How do I measure this? Now in order to do so, I'm going to draw an orthogonal line from the intersection to the wall to the top of my material and an orthogonal line from the intersection of the floor to the top of my material. So basically my reason is that if I can calculate this distance and this distance, then I only need to draw an orthogonal line and then I have my diagonals to cut. So let's call it D1 D2. Now, I again, it's just a quick reminder, this is angle beta, this is alpha, but also the opposites are two, so this is alpha and this is beta. So it's a very sort of neat relationship. Now I'm going to call this the projection on the wall, so this distance over here, I'm going to call it D1 prime, and this distance at the bottom, I'm going to call it D2 prime. Now if I would know D2 prime, this would be very straightforward, because I know that D2 prime when projected into the other side of the material, so multiplied by the sine of alpha, this is going to be d2, which is the distance I'm looking for, but I don't have d2 prime. Now, the, what I do know is the thickness of my material, which is this distance over here, right? So this is my distance d, my thickness d. Now, I also know that if I take d2 prime and I project it on that side, so times the sine of beta, this equals d. And this makes it very easy for me to extract d2 prime, because I know that d2 prime then must be t divided by the sine of beta. Now, this is it. This is what I need. I have a definition of d2 prime that I can put into my top formulation right there. So I can come up with the final formulation for d2. So d2 equals t divided by the sine of beta multiplied by the sine of alpha. And that's it. This is the key result for me that allows me to calculate the distance d2. And for me, when I calculate this, oops, 
D2 ends up being 17 millimeters. So that's it. Now I can do exactly the same with D1, right? So I can say by the same, okay? So D1 prime multiplied by the sine of beta so equals D1. And uh, 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 but I also know that if I take d, uh, if I take uh, d one prime, and I multiply it by the sine of alpha, of alpha equals t. So I know that d one prime equals t divided by the sine of alpha. So again, if I plug this in at the top, I end up with a definition for t one that is t divided by the sine of alpha multiplied by the sine of beta. So for me, this is my final result, which is in fact the same as the other one, just a different way of projecting at different uh, angles, but with D1 ends up being roughly 60 millimeters. So that's it. Now the question is, let's stop the recording here, there we go. So the first thing I need to do is I need to measure my material. So I'm gonna cut at 125.3, so 25.3, so that's right there. And I'm going to make an orthogonal line right here as well. So let's close that. Okay. And now I have the other two dimensions, which are 17 and 60. So I'm going to measure 17 first, which is right there. This means that if I put these two lines together, this gives me the space that I need to cut right there. So I'm going to put this a bit down so you can see. There you go. And I'm going to do the same from the other side. So I'm going to calculate 60. And now I'm going to put this together with the other corner. So this is the other piece of material that I need to take out. So that's it. I need to take out this over here and this over there. So essentially, if I don't want to cut my material at length, it's basically two cuts. This diagonal cut here and this diagonal cut here. So let me cut this and let's see if this works. your life by making uh, you look through math on how to calculate these angles? Well, that's a big question. So if I put this at the bottom, then you end up with a very, I don't know how this nice and tight. You end up with a fairly neat, tight uh, piece of material for both uh, the bottom you go. Um, I hope you enjoyed this very easy way to calculate angles and if you didn't then I'm sorry you wasted 10 minutes of your life. Cheers!